Hello and welcome to Winging It. So we are here, we are back. We have another game from the Lucky Lake Duck Dash. This one is round five. And as you can see, this one is up against Ethma. So yeah, it's been a little while since our last uh, gameplay video here. It does seem to be determined a bit by um, the matchups in the tournaments. And sometimes they can take a little bit longer, but we've got a best of three. And because it's Ethma, this could very easily go to three games. This is a tough opponent, so. Hopefully we'll get some good content. More importantly, hopefully we're going to get a good starting out here. Let's take a look. Go first. We got a chiff chaff. Things you like to see. Uh, chiff chaff in the starting hand. Got to be up there. And viticulturist as well to go with it. So interesting decisions. Interesting decisions because the goldfinch is definitely tasty. Um, but I also like the look of this avocet with the pink power potentially getting some eggs on the chiff chaff. Um, I had a very similar game actually to this where I think it was chiff chaff and golden eye and then I had another cavity nest bird and I played the golden eye got one egg and then that was it. Uh, my opponent played something I think it was a grackle in the in the wetlands and they didn't lay eggs again they just used that to get eggs so it can definitely burn you um, but equally it's a second Second wetland bird, and there's worms in the feeder, so it's tempting. It's tempting to do this, grab a worm, and get these two down. Um, but yeah, equally, I mean, we do have a red-headed woodpecker in the tray, um, and given all those seeds, could be could be kind of handy. Could be kind of handy to use that as the second wetland bird, and maybe get some food whilst we go about our business. So. I think having been burned by the pink power plus chiff chaff already, I think we're going to learn from that mistake and not go with it. Um, but yeah, I do think I do think that woodpecker is appealing in the tray. I'd be surprised. It's not the kind of bird you see picked up um, at the start of a game. And yeah, given all those seeds there, I think I can do something with that. So I think we're just going to go solo chiff chaff. Um, along with viticulturalist, like I could keep the woodpecker for viticulturalist, the very in the tray as well. Um, but I'm not going to worry too much about that for now. We're going to lock that in, and we're just going to pray that Ethma doesn't go for a grass and singer because, um, yeah, that will make me feel like I should have kept the other set, picked up the worm, played that. But like I said, um, yeah, been burned with that, been burned with that before with the golden eye, and it was just so slow because. You know, you, 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 you hope for those free eggs because with Chiff Chaff, you want to just keep drawing cards. You want to draw cards as much as possible. Um, and anytime you then have to play a bird or, you know, maybe you maybe you find yourself not finding wetland birds, which I think is what happened. And I had to pivot away and get some eggs um, through other means. But it's generally, you know, you, you can find an egg layer. So you're looking for a, a grackle, a bush tit, something like that uh, to go alongside this. So... It's, it's obviously much easier in those situations where um, you're kind of more self-sufficient um, and you're not relying so much on, uh, on another player's actions to get you some stuff. But yeah, we're going to have to wait and see. Um, these end of rounds are not particularly conducive to a, to a Chiff Chaff full tuck. But there wasn't really a whole lot else in the starting hand to go off. Uh, when you got Chiff Chaff, I feel like you kind of have to go with it. Um, this is definitely something that, you know, when the European expansion first came out, um, I was very interested to see how players would react to starting hand shift chat. Um, whether it was going to be one of those birds where it's like a gull or a kill deer where it kind of dictates your whole strategy, um, or if you could get away with leaving it. But I feel like more often than not, you know, people keep this and, and could start a really good wetland tucking engine. So, Ethma's kept two birds and three food. I think... I think we're just going to play Chiff Chaff. <laughs> um, I'm kind of... I, I, I am tempted to just pick up that woodpecker. The thing is, it would cost me... It would cost me an egg when I pick it up. I th I'm just going to pick up anyway. I'm just going to pick up anyway. That forces turds not a bad option either. Yeah, I could have played Chiff Chaff, laid eggs, picked up cards, but then, yeah, is it is it worth me trading eggs for cards? Probably not in this situation. 
the eggs are a bit more precious, so. Gain food. Double fish, that smells like a Wilson Storm petrol. For sure. Um, but it could be a it could be a dipper or a diver, I suppose, as well. Um, do I want? Do I want the horse's turn? I think I kind of do, and I'm kind of tempted to do that. Save the fish. Use the woodpecker to get a seed to play the chiff chat. Because I think if he is going to play, if he is going to play the, what I'm imagining is a storm petrol or a, or a diver. Then we can pick up the turn and get a seed all at the same time. There it is. So storm petrol, really, really good opening birds. Lots of empty card slots. So lots of card drawing, uh, which explains why he didn't go for the first turn. So we're going to pick it up. And we're going to take this one so we minimize chances of re-rolls, I think, because we want to get as many seats as possible. Ooh, yellow-headed blackbird. I can't imagine that's going to stay there for much longer. I think if I'm Ethma, I'm grabbing that. Even if it's not super amazing for him, yeah, he can't, he can't let me have that. He doesn't know I've got Chiff Chaff, but even alongside that Woodpecker, um, I don't think you could leave it so. Buick's friend comes up in its place, not excited by that. Uh, but we will play these two next, so we can lay eggs, play these two. And then I think we just start drawing. We see three cards a turn. We're probably just going to be tucking most of them until we find something good. And uh, and by something good, I mean another, another Wetlands option. Another Wetlands tucking bird. Um, would be great. Blackbird, Orduin's Skull is kind of the the dream, dream scenario, but we'll see. We'll see what we can find. And yeah, if I can get a couple more seeds from the bird feeder through the woodpecker, um, I'm kind of okay with that. Oh man, that's a lot of cards. <laughs> so he kept one more at the start. Does it show? Yeah, it must. It must. Uh, this is new, actually, uh, in the latest patch. You can you can see your opponent's cards, but it must show them before because the storm petrol you draw and then you discard. So it must show before they before they get discarded. But um, yeah, I'm not sure what the other birdie kept was, but he clearly just wants to dig for a bit. When you got storm petrol, I think you can't afford to do that. So we'll play chiff chaff, and then we'll play turn. And then yeah, we just start drawing. We start drawing. Um, we could skip the discard, so we draw two. We get a third from the turn. If we tuck them all, we don't have to discard. The issue comes if we want to keep a bird from our hand. We have to skip two tucks, because we start to discard if we do have a card in hand. So if there's something we like, we have to keep that and a sacrificial card for discarding. But yeah, if it's a, if it's a really good card, um, then it's worth doing that. And yeah, the, these kind of forces turn style birds, they can they can set you up really nicely. Man, he's still just drawing. He's gonna find something good here. Like he's looking at five cards a turn for three turns in a row. He he will have found something good. Um Yeah, I think I think again, kinda of like the Chiff Chaff, like this Storm Petrol, maybe when the European expansion first came out, people didn't realise quite how good it was, but to be able to drop that and just draw, you just see so many cards. Uh, and, and with a bigger deck and more specific kind of birds you might be looking for having that uh, having that early on just being able to see such a huge volume of cards like I have no doubt he's got some really good cards here uh, and that does that does worry me you know something for the forest or I would put it past him finding a, a crow or a raven to get some food going definitely definitely a concern but We've got a good setup. I'm happy with uh, I'm happy with how this is starting. And yeah, we would not have got um, we would not have got any Avacet eggs yet. So there's that. 
and I think this woodpecker has helped out. And hopefully, hopefully I can nab those two seeds. Okay, I should have should have kept my mouth shut. Hopefully, I can nab at least one of those seeds. Um, yeah, this is a prime example of three birds I'm not that interested in. Um, so they'll all get tucked. We'll take the seed with a woodpecker, and then we have to discard because we've got no cards left over. So. Not a bad little turn. Three points out of food. Uh, yeah, we're going to miss this end around. I think we are going to miss quite a lot of these end arounds. Um, if I'm completely honest. We might see what we can do about that next one. Hopefully we can find something that has a ground nest. I could go in the forest. I mean, Red Adviria kind of meets that and the bonus card, but I need something to play alongside it. Um, he's going food again. I wonder if he has found a raven. Yeah, I think he's found a raven. <laughs> oh well. Never mind. Oh, ruddy duck. Ruddy duck. Sexless lark. Um, okay. Well, the turtle dove is kind of handy as well. So I can play that, get an egg. Or a food. And I'm getting lots of seeds for it. Uh, but yeah, this ruddy duck... That will let me to draw three, four, five, six. And then tuck four, but then I would still have to discard. So maybe the ready duck's not so great. Um I think I I think I'll keep the I think I'll keep the turtle dove. Because that's gonna get me a free egg. I wish I could have drawn it a bit earlier and hit and hit it for the center round, but um never mind. Yeah. I think uh, I think Ready Duck. I think Ready Duck's gonna go. Um, yeah, would have been good before the forces turn, but now I've got the forces turned down. It's not really, not really needed. So, not a bad first round. But if uh, if ethel has got a Raven, nah, I'm not gonna be feeling so good. This, this turtle dove gives me some flexibility. I can either gain an egg or I can gain a food and give myself more control over the bird feeder. Like I could easily grab the uh, the cherry that's there, which then lets me re-roll with the woodpecker. And potentially I will need that cherry anyway, so... <clears throat> right... If you have got a raven, what do you do here? Do you draw again? There's no point gaining food. There's no point laying eggs. I think he did draw again. So we both blank at the end of round. Yeah, he did draw again. Okay, so raven's going to go down here. Um... I think I will play this. I'm going to have to be really careful on this bird feeder because Raven means he's not going to be taking food at all. Um, do I put it up there or do I put it here? Extra eggs. I think I'm going to put it here because chances are I'll need to lay eggs this round to get something for um, the end of round, so we'll do that. What are we going to get? Oof. Forester. I mean, these two pair really well as, as bonus cards go. Um, but yeah, not really what I was after. We'll grab the cherry. That's going to be a difficult one to, to score points off, I think. That's going to be difficult. But we'll try our best. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is not good. This is not good. Because no doubt in these many, many birds he's drawn... He'll have some other good grassland options, so um, yeah, plenty of plenty of tucker draw birds, plenty of other things to go alongside um, a raven that could work well. Yeah, that smells like a that smells like a swallow or a or a martin. But um, let's just draw. Oh, Tony's warbler. Curation J. Um, okay, go on 
that's it, that's it. I think I do. No, I think I think at this point we just have to keep digging. Okay, good. It's a couple of seeds there. I don't mind that. I think we just have to dig until we find a tucking bird for the grass, for the, for the wetlands. Um, and then we might just have to go all in and just just spend the rest of the game throwing cards. Yeah, there's the swallow. Ooh, hummingbird. Hummingbird definitely makes this interesting. Um, okay. Oh, that would be really nice to keep, actually. Yeah, I might, I might keep that turkey. So we'll take the seed. Oh, where do we put the hummingbird? Do we put it in the wetlands? Yeah, I think this turkey for viticulturalists kind of feels like a feels like a no-brainer. He's laying eggs. He's not picking up that double bird. I'm guessing he's got something for the forest. Um. Okay, do I play hummingbird then lay eggs? I could do hummingbird, eggs. Forest turkey, eggs, and try and that could hit the end of round. Because as, as nice as wetland hummingbird would be, I think getting eggs and food is going to be nice. So I think we'll pay with the cherry. Um, I don't really care about giving him a reroll. So yeah, Forrester goes out the window if we play Turkey, but... I think it was always out the window, to be honest. So he's got a nice little three-point engine here. Lay eggs, tuck and draw, discard the egg, get some food, so... Um, I would expect him to be able to win this end of round. But we can put pressure on, because we can reach three. And I think this is a worthwhile little sidetrack, because, like, this is a, this is 11 points, this turkey, with the bonus card. And yeah, I can, I can put it in the forest if it helps the end around. If it doesn't, I'll put it in the grasslands and it'll get me some extra eggs. Um, and it's going to help for that last end around. Actually, we might, we're not looking too bad for that last end around already. We're already going to have three. We've got two here in the turkey, so... We could. We could have a shot here. Snow bunting. Ouch. Okay, but he can't do anything for the centre round then because he's not got any food. Damn. Okay. Well, good thing I'm not tucking for a few turns. Yeah, what could he thing is, if I give him a food, what could he play up here? You have to play something and then lay eggs into it. I think I can win this end of round, so. Um, I I could let him take first. Chances are he's not going to take that cherry. But if he does, and then I don't get the cherry on the reroll, <laughs> it would be annoying. So I, I, I don't care so much about giving rerolls to to Raven players. Because they can get whatever food they want, but... Yeah, that I don't like to see. Definitely don't like to see that. Okay, what did he take? A worm. Let's see. Because if he plays... Uh, he, he's going to want to play something, right? You kind of need to hit the sand around. It's, it's a big it's a big let-off if you don't. Well, he's not. He's not going for it. 
So I think we play. I think we play grass and turkey here. I think we play grass and turkey. Because then that's going to help us get more eggs. Uh, yeah, I did not expect to be... I'm, I'm glad now. I'm glad I did play that turtle dove up there. I did not expect to be able to win it with one egg. Because, like, what could he play? Because even if he played, like, Dunnock, I suppose Dunnock would win it, but... Um, he's not. <laughs> that would be really silly. Maybe... Yeah, because he's grabbed, he's grabbed a couple of rodents. He could be baiting me, because he could play it. You could play Goldeneye or something. Any sort of teal power. Uh, but I don't think he's going to do that. I think he's. I think he's willfully, willfully leaving this end around. So I might be about to look silly if he if he does snipe it, but we'll see. But yeah, this snow bunting is going to eat into my wetlands, so I'm going to need to bear that in mind. Definitely going to need to bear that in mind. But I can at least lay eggs now and get some points and some food. So it's uh, it's something gives me a gives me another option for scoring points, getting resources. He's played a rough man. He's getting all the tucky birds. This is uh, this is a little bit annoying. Um, but fine. I think do we take cards here? So we take the seed and then look to lay eggs. I think we do that. <laughs> okay. Does hit viticulturalist. I think I might skip all the tucks here. Because there's no point me tucking one because it gives him a tuck. Uh, it's only worth it if I tuck all of them and if I want to keep the bunting. I want to keep the bunting. skip. We'll take that. Okay. So we're actually looking okay. We're going to be on 43 points. Which is more than him, but I don't like all this card cycle. Like, this Storm Petra, he would have already drawn loads of good birds. Um, and even if they're not good birds, he just drew some birds, which he can now use to cycle. There we go. He's missed two end of round goals. Which is, is definitely unusual. But here we go. Round three. We've got a Carolina Wren in the tray. Which hits both my bonus cards. I don't think he's going to pick it up. He might do. I suppose X base and a forest bird for the center round. But um, I'm going to lay eggs first. Because there's food there that I want. And there's no seeds. And if I draw cards. I want to be maximizing my chances of, uh, of getting seeds when I do that. So... Um, this is this is actually okay. Get three eggs, which I need to play birds, and I need for the end of round, the last one, um, and get food at the same time. Like I said, I'm, I'm not too fussed. I'm not too fussed about giving a little bit of food. It's obviously got value to Ethma, but it's got a lot more value to me here. But he keeps taking rodents, so I wonder if he's got like a program falcon or a, or a golden eagle or something. But yeah, I might I might grab that Ren. Because if that maxes out Vitti with this bunting. It could, uh, could work. Common Blackbird as well, actually. Now that I think about it. Covers two slots. So it would fill two columns. So if I'm worried about him getting to two or three. I have done that before with uh, with the roller. I'll link to that video. Um, but I have played that before for the Phil's Columns end of round and got a tie when I would have otherwise lost. So, you know, if you get some extra points, that's where they can be useful. Okay, he's picked up the Wren. Um, so, yeah, that Blackbird. <laughs> Maybe I do grab it. Maybe I do grab it. Um, but for now, there's a Cherry in the feeder. 
and I want it. So yeah, I think he'll. I think he'll play the Wren. I think he has got a Golden Eagle. I think Wren is good for him because he needs filled columns and it gets more cards. So he saves a turn drawing cards. You get more to tuck under the bunting and the rough. That's a very good, very good uh, indigo bunting bird feeder. I can also play this Mississippi kite up here for the filled columns. I might do that. But yeah, we've got some options. Got some options. There's the golden eagle. So this is now a five point grasslands. Just trying to work out if I if I draw cards, play the bunting in the grasslands. And then lay eggs. I don't think I'll have enough food to play the blackbird. But I could if I played the kite in the grasses instead. But then I use up all my food and, and I do want to play this bunting for the for the bonus card, so. Um Yeah. Okay. Last turn around, he's got two. I'm going to have three. Still an oyster catcher are both quite nice options. So I could go for them as well. I think I'm going to play this bunting. I think getting a bit more food um, and hitting the bonus card with culturalist. I think it's worth doing that. So yeah, he might be able to tie us on. Uh, he might be able to tie us on this end around. I don't think there's much we can do. I'm trying to work out what my end game is because it's not very clear. I can't just tuck cards with the chiff chaff because this snow bunting is uh, it's going to rack up points. But I might have to do that. Because I think Ethma's going to have a bit of a surge here. Yeah. Okay. So let's assess how many points is it going to be on. It's got 11 here. Got another 11 here, so it's 22. 27. 36. 41. And he's not got any end of rounds. So we've got 12 points on him, but he has got a bonus card. Let's lay eggs. Uh, we'll do that. We'll do that. Actually, we'll take the cherry. We'll take the cherry while it's there, because we might, we might find another... Okay, he picked up the Oyster Catcher. Which again, I think he's just using that. He's using that as a way to get some extra cards. Um, so use for the rough and tuck under the swallow. So he probably doesn't need to draw cards again. He can just play those and, and keep laying eggs. And that's what he wants to do. Just legs as much as possible. Uh, he might go for the Brant as well. Brant is actually not bad for me. There's extra cards to tuck, but like I say, I don't know how much more tucking I'm going to be doing on this Chiff Chaff. I really don't. Because it's not a great engine. It's two points. Even if I get a fourth wet and bird hit, it's three points because I'm giving him one every time. Um, I can get more than that from my grasslands at the moment. So It's an interesting cat and mouse situation, I think. Um, Oyster Catch hits the last end of Rangle as well, actually. Um, but so does Brant. So does Brant. And so does the Stilt. Blacktail Godwit. Okay. So you see, he's playing all the birds that let him draw extra cards. 
Um, did he pick up one of the forest double birds? I don't know. I don't know if he did. Um, I think we draw cards here. So I think that brand could come in handy. I'm surprised he didn't pick it up. Um, yeah, he could he could definitely have gone for the blackbird play here if he wanted to. I suppose maybe he could still... He could double play into blackbird if he wants to. Okay, so if we draw... If we draw three and tuck all of them, we'd have to get rid of the kite. So I think we'll... I think we'll draw here. Get rid of an egg. And I might just want to get rid of all of these. Draw one off the top first. All these crappy birds coming up. Um... Yeah, I wish I wish I could play this. This would be such a good play to hit to hit the viticulturist, but <laughs> horned lark um, could work. So it does hit the last end around. I got actually so king rail. Okay, okay, we're starting to get some options now. Um, we're starting to get some options. Yeah, I might. That might be me done. For drawing cards. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I want any of these, to be honest now. Okay. I think we're going to skip tucking because I want to keep... I want to keep the kite. <laughs> I think I do actually want to keep this horned lark. And I definitely want to keep the king rail. I think my end game is just going to be lay eggs and play these birds and, and gamble on a bonus card. It's not worth it's not worth drawing cards, so um if I tuck one, it's not no point because um Ethma gets a tuck on a draw. And if I tuck two, well then I have to discard so we'll skip. And we're gonna re-roll. And we're gonna get punched in the gut <laughs> by the bird feeder. So that's a shame. That is a shame. But I think we should still be okay. We played Mississippi Kite last round we lay eggs three times that's going to give us six food. So we can have one overpay. As long as the bunting works all the time. Um, actually, we'll, 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 we've got a bit of leeway because we've got an extra cherry. So, um, Yeah, I'm intrigued to see what he does. I'm kind of half-minded to think I should have denied that blackbird. Just on the off chance he, uh, he does double play into it. Because I know there was a Tufted Titmouse earlier. I can't remember if he picked it up. Uh, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. But yeah, this has been a this has been an unusual game, to say the least. I really wish I could. Really wish I could hit. Okay, he did pick up the Titmouse. He just did Titmouse into Hobby. Yeah, if if I, I I really wish I could have grabbed that tip mouse earlier because doing that double play into this would be just so amazing for the bonus card as well. But I think I have to play. I think I have to play Mississippi Kite here um, just for the end of the round. Unless he's baiting me and he's got Benelli and he's going to then play that or like a Condor or something. But um, yeah, why would you play Hobby and not the? Has he got Rentologist? I would have expected him to do tip mouse into Ren to get more bird cards with the tucking because now he doesn't have enough for the rough. Um, so yeah, maybe he's gonna draw cards. I don't think I don't think I think if he if he does hit the end of round he's gonna he's gonna challenge himself because he's gonna lose points on the rough so um, I'm kind of okay with uh, with playing this. If that does tie the end around, that's six points. It's not bad, so. 58, we're going to be on, yeah, somewhere in the 60s. I don't know. I think this is going to be tight. This could come down to, uh, this could come down to a King Rail bonus card. And like, if I find Omnivore, 
that's probably my ticket to uh, to a good score. But if I blank it, it's not going to look so good. And yeah, Horned Lark. I think Horned Lark. I think it could be worth playing. It's going to get some extra eggs. It's going to potentially. I might get lucky and get get one with the Grossbeak. Let's tuck under it. Um, but yeah, extra eggs and hit the end around. Ooh, he did pick up Brant. And reveal Partridge. So he's going to miss some rough tucks. Because I think he must have just laid eggs there. Can't actually tell. Three birds, yeah, because he played the eagle, the godwit, and then these two, so he must be, must be laying eggs. Oh man, I do kind of wish I'd kept that avocet now, but it's it's like it's hindsight is hindsight's twenty twenty. You can never really tell. But some good birds in the tray. He'll be he'll be very happy to see that blue winged warble, I think. Um, but the golden oriole. I don't know if that's worth us picking up and playing. Well, it's gone now. Whipping crane. <laughs> there goes the brand. Um, yeah, I can't. I I really want to deny that that whipping crane, but I don't think I can. So he's going to pick that up, play it, hit that game five for this end around. So um, I think we just have to do we have to do the plan. Uh, we have to do the plan. So yeah, we lay eggs, we'll, we can force down force down the horned lark. Legs twice more. As long as bunting works, we should be okay for the king rail. I think that's the only option. Ah, oh, this is really annoying. I'm not sure. I think my hands my hands are kind of tight here. Um, okay, we'll take a we'll take a wrap because then that means next time when we come to lay eggs, we're definitely going to get something. Oh no, we need to take a worm. What am I on about? Okay, well either he takes a rat and we get the cherry, or he he takes a cherry and we get a reroll. So that would be okay. Yeah, it's just not it's just not worth drawing cards. Drawing cards is two. Like I, I could deny the crane. It's two and I don't even get food from it, so okay, he did take the rat. Yeah, I think he's gonna win. I think he is gonna win this game. He's had some kind of mediocre plays, like this was not a great play for the end of round. This was not a great play, but it hit the end of round. But this engine is reliably scoring five points. So many good birds coming up in the tray for him, so it was like quite a smooth end game. Uh, and I feel like in these kind of positions in the final round, whenever you have one player with a very smooth end game and another player with a very rocky end game, it doesn't uh, it doesn't always doesn't always bode well. So um, yeah, I think I will. Thing is, I could it's a it's a gamble. I could play it safe and lay eggs and uh, and hope for a seed on the hummingbird, and then guarantee I can play the king roll. But um, I think. I think I need to. I think I need to gamble here. We'll play Horned Lark. And yeah, we legs twice. We get eight points for that, so that takes us seventy-six. We'll play this. Seventy-eight plus a bonus card plus four for the end of round. Yeah, we're going to be like mid eighties. And you look at this board, and this is this is this has got ninety plus written all over it. So yeah, there goes the whipping crane. And it's perfect because he's got he's got cards left he can tuck under the swallow, and he's got exactly three for the rough. So um, yeah, what has he got? He's got he's got so many more bonus cards. He's got three bonus cards. He could easily have a ontologist, omnivore, which maybe explains why he why he went for the brant over the the wren. Um, so I think that's looking good for him. But we shall just lay eggs. Yeah, see what we find. Okay, that's fine. If we take a wrap, we guarantee. 
I mean, I suppose we can take a worm, but yeah. We'll take a worm. And then we can definitely get hunting to work. And then hummingbird that we forced down the rail, so. Yeah, we're looking for omnivore. Uh, probably fishery manager would take us well for three. But I think it is gonna need to be a it's gonna need to be a six port omnivore to give us a shot here. <laughs> Because this is a, this is a very scary, very scary board. Very scary board. He's going to have us on birds. He's probably going to have us on tucks, which you wouldn't have expected, uh, considering our open with chiff chaff. But um, yeah, eggs, eggs. We might be close, but um, end of rounds, end of rounds. I think it's going to be pretty even. I'll ledge it by like two points, but it's not loads. Okay, he's laying eggs. Ooh. Three worms. It's not a safe Phoebe. Oh, he's, he's, I think he's got the warbler. He's going to do plays up in the forest, so uh, that's going to be nice for him. Yeah. He might still have another double bed. We'll just lay eggs. Grab that. Reroll. No fish. It's fine. We can, we can force. We can force the king route, and that's what we're going to do, so yeah. If Turtle Dove could have given me a slightly better bonus card, and if I could have found that double bird to do the do the viticulturalist, that would have been that would have been really nice. Maybe I should have grabbed that Viri at the start, but it's always kind of hindsight. Hindsight's always twenty twenty in these situations. So, all right. So my opponent had to step away there. Unfortunately, we missed the last turn of the game, but uh, took it offline. We played the King route and we drew, as you can see there, bird counter bonus card. So, did get four points off that. Uh, unfortunately, missing out on the end of round goal. So, we do lose that one. Uh, but let's go into the scores and see what the damage is going to be. As I say, not feeling super confident here. Uh, obviously, missing quite a lot of bonus points. And yeah, opponent already has a strong lead. We go into the bonus cards and there's just keep counting up. So, huge total there. We drag it back a little bit. On the end of round goals uh, and eggs as well so it's looking like it could be tight but we know plenty of tuck cards there for our opponent and it is a pretty comfortable win for them in the end 112 to 86 so yeah those 21 bonus points um that was a, a big part of this so look at that six there eight there and seven there um sadly for me my three bonus cards i'm only getting seven between them um so a little bit of a shame there but yeah, as I said, it was just Raven digging uh, in its purest form almost. I don't know if they started with it, but uh, playing this Storm Petrol early, it's just such a strong card. You just draw for a few turns, see what you find, and yeah, you just look at so many cards. So you find a Raven, you find a Swallow, uh, and you're good to go. And obviously pl plenty of other good birds. That Snow Bunting really, I think for me, um, did kind of force my shift away. But again, just not finding um, the Wetland Birds. It was, it was a pretty positive start. I feel like... The woodpecker was uh, maybe an unusual choice, but uh, yeah, I think it did work out. I think it did work out getting the food, obviously, get the hummingbird and the dove and then this turkey down as well. Really, I was just crippled by not being able to find um, the additional birds to add to this engine and, of course, uh, not getting super amazing bonus cards. But it's not all over. It's a best of three, so um, we have our tail between our legs here after game one but we can still turn this around with two more to go. So if you want to stay up to date with those future parts, definitely do hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified when game two and hopefully game three come out. But uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again, hopefully very soon in the next video.